The First World War was a brutal conflict. One of the deadliest global conflicts in history, in fact. The war, known as the Great War, resulted in an estimated 50 to 56 million people dying as a direct cause of the war. Larger battles, tales of the trenches, chemical warfare, there is no shortage of horror stories from this conflict. One such story took place when the Germans tried to capture the Ossoviet fortress from the Russians. Built in the years 1882 to 1892 by the Russian Empire, the fortress is in what is now northeastern Poland. The purpose of the fortress was to protect the western borders of Russia against Germany. And ever since its completion, the fortress was continuously modernized to cope with advances in heavy siege artillery. The fortress would become famous for its defensive endeavors, especially on the right bank of the river. The fortress would become a prototype for the modern fortified area as well as an example of an effective combination of permanent and field fortifications. The fortress was built less than 50 kilometers from the border with the German province of East Prussia, in the one place where the marshlands of the river could be crossed. This meant that the fortress would be guarding this area and controlling a vital choke point. Attacks upon the fortress would be made even more difficult by the bogs and marshes surrounding the area. The Belostok Luke Königsberg rail line also ran through the fortress and crossed the river. This was a very strategic location, and as such, the fortress would see heavy fighting during the beginning of World War I, as Germany really wanted control of this fortress. The first attack came in September 1914, when Russian field defenses that surrounded the fortress were attacked by 40 infantry battalions of the German 8th Army. The ensuing battle would last for several days before the frontal assault was repelled by Russian artillery. The second attack came a few months later in February 1915 when the Germans attacked the fortress to cut the railway line between Bialystok and Warsaw. The German artillery and air bombardment would last for a month before the attacks were once again repelled. After this attack, the situation would devolve into a positional warfare for the next several months. For clarity, positional warfare is also known as trench warfare, and is a type of warfare categorized using trenches, fortifications and other defensive positions to hold ground and defend against enemy attacks. The third final and most famous attack came in July 1915 when the Germans launched a full frontal offensive on the fortress. This attack included 14 battalions of infantry, 1 battalion of sappers, 24 to 30 heavy siege guns, and 30 batteries of artillery equipped with a mixture of chlorine and bromine gases. In order to avoid this attack being unsuccessful like the previous two, the Germans had decided to use this gas during the attack. They had learned that the Russians did not have any gas masks, so they believed that with the use of the gas, the defeat of the Russians at the fortress would be swift. While still bombarding the fortress with their usual attacks, the Germans decided to wait for favorable wind conditions before they used the gas, to avoid the gas being blown back at them. This would lead them to wait for more than 10 days, until August 6th, when the wind conditions were just right. At around 4 o'clock, the German army then began this new attack with heavy artillery fire. Then, they released the 30 balloons of chlorine and bromide gases. With the wind being just right, it would only take 5 to 10 minutes before the entire fortress was blanketed by a massive, foul-smelling blanket of gas. 
trying to filter out some of the gas, the Russians in the fortress would put soaked rags on their faces. Some soldiers did end up surviving this gas attack, but the majority of the soldiers in the fortress did die. The ones that were still able to fight decided to charge at the German soldiers in one final defensive attack. The Germans were so confident in their victory that they did not expect any counterattack and they were calmly waiting to just move in on the fortress. But then out of the fog of the gas, they saw soldiers running at them, coughing up blood and bits of their lungs, looking half dead. And at this sight, the Germans began to panic. Many of them would turn and run away running so fast that some of them even got caught in their own wire traps. The remaining guns would then open fire on the fleeing Germans. In the end, the German attackers had once again been repelled, but the garrison would suffer heavy losses. The Russians would not hold the area for much longer. The Germans had not given up yet, and when they threatened to encircle the fortress with the capture of Kaunas, which is a fortress complex in Kaunas, Lithuania, and a nearby city in Ukraine, the Russians decided to demolish much of the fortress before they retreated on August 18, 1915. Today, some parts of the fortress are accessible to tourists. The mixture of the gas that was used in this attack was bromine and chlorine. In theory, bromine gas would destroy the cells in a person's eyes and nose and, as such, would be a very powerful weapon. But most gas attacks that used bromine as the main component would fail. At most, the gas only irritated the enemy soldiers, who probably didn't even realize that they had been hit with a gas attack. This meant that bromine would be used as a part of a mixture instead of a main component. The main component in this case was chlorine. The first time chlorine was used in a gas attack was on April 22, 1915, when the German army had 168 tons of chlorine deployed north of Ypres, Belgium. It is estimated that over 1,100 people were killed as a result of this gas attack. As this was the first time they had used chlorine gas, the Germans seemed to be just as shocked by the devastating effects of the gas as the Allies were. When seeing the effects of the gas, they became very wary of it, so they failed to take advantage of the situation, which allowed the Allies to hold most of their positions. But that didn't stop them from trying again. Most exposures to chlorine occur by inhalation. And it's not necessarily dangerous in very low doses, but if you were to breathe in high levels of chlorine, it will cause fluid buildup in the lungs, which is a condition known as pulmonary edema. This condition leads to shortness of breath, coughing up foam and loose mucus, wheezing, chest tightness, and difficulty breathing. In addition to that, the chlorine gas might also react with water in the lungs and form something called hydrochloric acid, which is destructive to tissue. And even if it doesn't necessarily reach the lungs, chlorine may still cause coughing, vomiting and eye irritation and inflict damage to the eyes, nose, throat or lungs. Which means that the description of the soldiers rushing towards the Germans, coughing up their lungs, having bloodshot eyes and looking near death was most likely very accurate. Chlorine's usefulness as a weapon though was short-lived. The gas was pretty easy to spot due to its color and odor. And the effects of the gas would be minimized by placing water-soaked or urine-soaked rags of the mouth and nose. Also, releasing the gas in a cloud would pose other problems. I mentioned how the Germans waited for 10 days to release the gas because they needed the wind conditions to be just right. At the Battle of Luz, the British tried using gas for the first time, and they released 150 tons of chlorine gas. But the wind shifted and blew the gas back onto the British soldiers. This final charge by the Russian soldiers has become known as the attack of the dead men. 
the time when the walking dead themselves rose and fought to defend the fortress. This event has been immortalized in songs by both a Russian metal band called Aria and the Swedish metal band Sabaton. Yet another chapter in the horrors of World War I. 